Thank you everybody for joining us on this happy Thursday before the April Fool's Day on Friday. Um, we appreciate you being able to take your time out to join us. So today we're going to talk with me today. We have Mike Golijic with, um, he is one of our HCCA board members and he is um, a condo owner in Mapaquilo. Um, and we're going to talk about our board of director training that we have coming up on April 30th. It's an all day Saturday. Um, it includes a, deliver, a lunch delivered to you via Bite Squad, but it's really going to be a full day of learning. And even if you've already been to it once, it's really good to do it again. Um, and I've heard it commented many times from other people that have attended it multiple times that they still pick up things that they didn't pick up on previous. So, um, Mike, you've been to our board of director training. What, what did you, um, how did you feel about it? Oh, yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, you know, I've attended several of them now. And each time you do pick up something, maybe you missed the first time, maybe you were busy doing something when the topic came up or it wasn't presented the same way. And then, oh, yeah, hey, that's important. And whether it's about the HRS changes or whether it's about insurance, because Sue Savio always has things about insurance and they seem to keep changing all the time. Or, you know, and the other attorney and then Jane, too. Uh, she always has good points to bring up, especially about legislation. And that's always changing. So that's good for board members, whether you're a brand new board member or you know, you've been on for a long time, like me, it's still good to go to that training. Yeah, it was, we're going to, um, included in it is, um, for some of the people that can't attend our regular board, our regular, um, webinars or seminars, the way we used to call them, um, especially our law update, if they can't attend the end it, attend it, um, we're going to be doing, um, there's one section on the new laws. So, um, Lorie McGuire will be handling that to update everybody on the and there was a bunch of them this year, a bunch yes, of laws introduced. So now they've kind of been narrowed down. So she's going to go through that. Um, and then Jane, um, she's going to also um, give some time allowed for the um, for the life safety evaluation because there are some changes happening there at the city level as well, some big changes, you know. So it would be a good opportunity for everybody to get caught up on some of the new issues surrounding the life safety evaluation. Um, it's it's the workbook training. It, I mean, and you guys can still keep hand out like. I still have mine and I have a bunch of notes written all over it, you know, and the registration cost is paid for by the association. So any board member can um, register either um, online at hawaiicouncil.org or they can call their managing agent or property manager um, or their admin, uh, the admin person within their uh, managing agent company and have them register. And then they will process the payment. But the, um, as long as you are a board member, the cost of that registration fee is is paid for out of the maintenance fee um, out of the condo association because it does allow for board members to use association funds to educate themselves. And we really highly recommend that board members educate themselves on all the laws, um, the current and some possible new ones that are up and coming, even the new ones that have already passed waiting to be signed into law. Um, it's what true. other things did you really get, get out of, of the training? Well, just the overall thing, including, you know, your fiduciary responsibility as a board member, which is always a, something that board members need to be reminded about. And the fact that you're there, not for yourself, but for your association, and you're working there for the whole association's benefits so that, uh, you know, things are maintained properly and fees are as such. And, uh, I, I always remember this from Sue Savio. She says, I've been on several boards and even ones where people didn't want to raise, but I told them why we needed to raise them, even if it was just a couple of dollars, because things keep changing and you got to have that money there if things break or fall apart or just need normal wear and tear and like repaving or whatever it might be, roofs, painting, et cetera. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, yeah. I'm a strong supporter of... of incrementally raising your maintenance fees because you don't want to um, burden any homeowner with a special assessment as much as possible. You try to avoid that. Yeah. I mean, for me, I'd rather pay a five or $10 increase every month, every year versus a five or $10,000 special assessment. 
that's a big chunk of change to come out of your pocket, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the things I learned about that was, you know, even though I'm not in a high rise, when they brought up the fact that uh, there were a couple of condos, because, you know, some of those things don't break for 30 years, but when they do, so people weren't putting things away in reserves and all of a sudden they came up with a piping situation that was going to cost them lots of, I can't even remember what the cost was, but it was going to be a hefty special assessment, just get them fixed. Yeah, you would think pipes last forever, but they really don't. No. Um, I've seen the inside of some of them and I go, oh, I've been drinking water out of that. Yeah, <laughs> you know? um, yeah besides fiduciary duty, we're really going to talk um, a bit about also your conflicts of interest, which is a really uh -huh. big issue. So you have fiduciary duty, conflicts of interest. And I, as um, getting out a lot of the emails from HCCA, um, I get a lot of um, people talking about retaliation, retaliatory tactics. Uh -huh. That's another big thing that's going on. And we really need to put a stop to it because, you know, it's really getting out of control on the part of the board. And, um, you know, sometimes it just, you know, it's getting out of control, you know. Yeah. Nobody should have to live with retaliatory tactics or the fear of retaliatory tactics, especially yeah. if they, they speak up or say something that that's just, you know, it, they shouldn't have to live under that kind of a um, condition. Yeah. Um, well, I wasn't directly involved with it, but I just heard about a couple that were having a problem like that being retaliatory tactics. And now they're looking for an attorney to see who can help them out with that. So that's the type of, there comes lawsuits, there goes, you know. And they're and, unnecessary. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> they are unnecessary. Um, you know, um, it just, you know, and a lot of lawsuits drive up the cost of our insurance. Yes. It's not any different than car insurance and you file a claim, drives your insurance up, you know. Um, it, so people really need to, sit down and listen, uh, let the other person be heard, give them that opportunity to be heard, be rational. So we really encourage everybody to go to Hawaii Council. We, um, we prefer everybody to register themselves because one of the issues we've been having now that we're on these webinars for the past few years is email typos. So um, sometimes the managing agent might do a typo and I'm putting it in, I might do a typo, so we're really encouraging everybody, all the board members to register themselves online as much as possible to avoid those typos. Because if you have a typo in your email, you're not gonna get the join link. Um, and I wanna remind everybody too, that the, um, when we get closer to the week of the event, I send out like about, well, it's set up and go to a webinar. They, um, I set up five email reminders with a link. So they kind of get it five times. Um, and um, I don't do any, we don't do any technical um, reply to emails on that day because there's a lot of things going on in that morning that yeah. I don't have the time to reply to emails. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, yeah. I saw you in action on a couple of those other board trainings because yeah, there are a lot of things going on. But I'll give you kudos for getting those lunches out because I couldn't believe it. I mean each time they show up within a half hour when we're going to go on that break, which I think is fantastic, you know? So when you go on your break and you have your lunch there, whatever you ordered. So that's And great. everybody has said it's a, it's a good lunch. I mean, I've used yeah. it not for just um, Hawaii council, but for some other things for work and everybody raves about the lunch. Yeah. I'm pretty much stuck with the same things because it's, it's a good, you know, good way. Some people like meat and some people want the vegetarians or they want only salad. So it's right. kind of a decent selection. Um, Bite Squad is is very efficient. Yes. You know? um, they're really good. They've really got it down pat. So. Um, and that's nice because then people eat, then they seem to pay more attention to this stuff even in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, um, and it's just a lot easier to have the lunch provided because then people aren't, aren't going to have to figure out what they're going to get, how they're going to get their lunch or, you know, and then they come back late, you know, so it's just easier. Just yeah. like when we're in a, at the Holikoa and well, I mentioned the Halekoa. Um, I've been checking in with them to see when yeah. they're open up again. They take their orders strictly from the military. Right. So um, the military has not allowed them to open up the catering department yet. Um, so I, I kind of keep every once in a while, I just go, hey, open up yet? You know, and they're like, no. You know, so, I mean, I would really love to get back to in-person. Um, yeah, that would be good. Yeah. I know some people like, you know, 
this form because they don't have to move. They can stay where they're at and watch it. But it's great to have in-person time too, because then you have a chance to speak to other board members and uh, even the speakers when you get a chance to. That makes it really good. That's why I like the in-person part. Yeah. Even though this is very convenient. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I know. I just like how we're gonna how we're gonna do it, you know, and slowly, I mean it's gonna probably be another year before everybody probably reverts to more in person, but I kind of yeah. think it's gonna be a hybrid going forward. Yeah. Like I do too. People, and I, it would be kind of nice, you know, some people want to only be uh, but then I think the hybrid are gonna be good for the people that cannot attend in person because of work or whatever other issues, you know? So I think the hybrid model is gonna be really, really beneficial. Um, yeah. And we'll be able to reach a broader audience that way as well. Um, and I, I've seen that happen at a couple other boards that I'm on because they said, oh, hey, we're getting ready to go back in person. <laughs> and over half of the people said, hey, can't we just keep it hybrid? I, I like doing it <laughs> on a Zoom conference. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever platform they use. <laughs> I can't wait till we get back into in-person. I'm going to kind of miss seeing people's faces, you know? Well, that's true too. You know, so I think what I might be doing is, because if um, I usually um, open the, the GoToWebinar platform, I usually start it kind of early, um, like an hour ahead. So I might, and I'll probably just leave it for people that, uh, an open mic, you know, that if, before we start, people can have a dialogue back, back and forth with each other, you know? Um, yeah. So that they can network that way as well um, via webinar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even after the webinar, we can leave it open for people to have yeah. discussions as well. Well, I hope the military changes mind soon because I know they've loosened up at their other locations on what their requirements are. But yeah, probably takes them a while to get around to the hotels and things. <laughs> 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 well, I'm sure the catering people can't wait to get back to their positions. I oh, think yeah. They've been moved around into other positions in the hotel, but um, I'm sure they can't. They, they really want to get back to it yeah. um, because I don't even know if they're doing all the other like, didn't they used to do hula, um, luau's and stuff like that out there? Yes, yes they did. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So, yeah. And, and that was a good location because people had parking and uh, get there and uh, that was yeah. good. Yeah, decent parking. So again, to recap, you know, our board of director training is on Saturday, April, um, April 29th. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me look. No, through. April 30th, April 30th, Saturday, April 30th. Oh yeah, you're right. April 30th. Yeah. Um, and it's going to start at 9 a.m. Lunch will start to get delivered via Bite Squad about around starting at around 11, 1130. So we incur, I encourage people not to use their phones to get onto the webinar because the Bite Squad people might be calling you because either they're lost or they need to get into the building. You know, I know a couple of years, the drivers ended up with a bunch of lunches because they couldn't deliver them because people weren't answering their phones, you know? So I said, just keep it. I don't know what they're doing, <laughs> just keep it. You know, we just had to kind of deal with it at, at the time. But um, everybody should be cognizant that um, Bite Squad, and they call from an outer area. I think it's a 619 or 614 area code because they're mm -hmm. in Minnesota. The corporate offices are in Minnesota. So all the guys have a um, company phone. So it's uh -huh. another phone call. Yeah. No, 619 is a California prefix. But San Diego, yeah, I think. Yeah. Or something <laughs> like that. It's a 61 something number. Okay. Um, but their app does something really weird because when I have get delivery, my doorbell rings and I don't have a doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird thing that they do. And I'm, I'm thinking, where, I don't have a doorbell. What, what I'm hearing. It. <laughs> but that's what happens when you go, go through um, Bite Squad. They uh -huh. have something that, um, and it sounds exactly <laughs> like a doorbell. And it just blows my mind. The first time I'm like, I don't have a doorbell. How is my doorbell ringing? <laughs> okay. So it's going to be a full day. Where you're going to have, be able to have um, questions, um, questions and answers. That's going to be opened up. Um, we really need everybody to register by our deadline date of, I believe it's the 15th, because we need a week to get your um, workbooks mailed out. Um, and we want to allow a week, because they go priority mail. But one year, it took like a week to 10 days to get to some people. Um, yeah. So we want to make sure, even though it's priority mail, we really want to make sure that everybody gets their booklets on time. Um, yeah. 
and there are going to be some other handouts that we're going to have. We're going to probably recap some other trainings that we've done in the past. Um, one of the other frequently violated one is um, 125A, the um, communication outside of a board meeting, right? decisions and stuff like that. So that's another uh, frequently violated one that keeps coming up. Um, and it's really nice when um, people they've attended in the past, they go, can you send me that thing again about the about not talking, you know? And so I'm just emailing it back to them and they're like, yeah, yeah, I remember that. You know, mm -hmm. so um, it, it at least we know we're kind of getting through to everybody. Um, right. And some of the information that in that 125A was done by in conjunction with um, DCCA, the condo specialist, they helped put it together as well. They had a lot of input on that. So, yeah, that's important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, again, we really want all the board members to try to, even a property manager, you know, or your site managers. Resident managers should attend that training. It is well worth the time, um, the one day. It's well worth the lunch, you know. <laughs> um, but it's full of information. Right. Well, our resident manager has attended at least once because he was relatively new and he wanted to know, and he picked up a lot of information by attending. Yeah, I know someone, they said they just hired a new resident manager. She said he's 20 something. And I'm like, well, I hope he attends because, you know, that's going to be his intro to, to a career. Yes. A possible career. You know, your general, top general managers like that Hakua and um, One Archer Lane, they all started down at the bottom, you know, and worked their way up. And it's their, it's their career. So livelihood. You yep. know? That's true. So, okay, Mike, thank you so much. For filling, yeah. in, for filling with me today on this um, topic. And um, it's it's something that I'm really like a little passionate about on the training and the education for people. So um, I hope we see a lot of people um, at this training. Um, we usually get a, a, we usually get a lot, like a, um, about 200. We've been averaging about 200 every year. So that's really good. But we know there's more than 200 condos out there. Right. <laughs> And you guys got to realize 40% of the population live in condos. So we should have a lot more people in attendance at these events. You're right. Okay. It is important. <laughs> it, is. it is. Okay. Can we pull up the slide one more time as we get ready to sign off? Okay, great. Okay, everybody. We hope to see your registrations coming in soon. Um, and your registration fees help to help us to further along education activities that um, Hawaii Council also does. We do a lot more education um, items. That's so, true. yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Mike, especially you for joining me today um, sure. and um, having a discussion on this topic. And um, I will see you again soon. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.